Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. I'd like to uh, solve a couple of problems um, for certain topics which we were uh, studying before electrostatics. Now, the previous lecture was about the Coulomb's law, which is the most important law in electrostatics. So, these problems are basically related to, uh, to this Coulomb's law and uh, just to complicate the issue uh, they are related to some other um, topics which we have learned before I just combine them in, in the problems which are related to Coulomb's law now this lecture is part of the course Physics for Teens presented on Unizor.com this is a free website um, dedicated to um, advanced topics of uh, mathematics and physics. There is a course Math for Teens which is kind of prerequisite to this Physics for Teens course. I do suggest you to watch this lecture as part of the whole course which can be taken on unizor.com um, because the course includes not only the lectures presented in certain logical order but also detailed notes for all the lectures and uh, there are problems like the one which we are talking today about and exams and um, again the, the the site is completely free and there are no ads so do it at will anyway so let's just solve these I have four problems related to electrostatics now now my first problem is you have an equilateral triangle and at each uh, vertex there is a charge a point object charge with um, one is positive, another is the same, and the third one is negative of the same magnitude. So this is point P, Q, and R. Now this is equilateral triangle, and the side is equal to D. Now, obviously these two objects are attracting um, the one which is at point R, because these are two positive and this is negative. So they're opposite, so they're attracting each other. So my uh, question is, what is the force which this particular object experiences as a result of these two forces? It's a very simple uh, problem and it basically includes uh, only the Coulomb's law and the law of addition uh, of uh, vectors which represent the forces. So we have basically two forces of attraction um, one from P, it goes this way, and another is from Q, this goes this way. They are of the same magnitude, and the magnitude of each force is uh, this coefficient, which is known from the Coulomb's law. Uh, the uh, one uh, charge, another charge, minus, so minus would be here u and minus q divided by d square which is the square of the distance between them so this is one uh, force and this is another force exactly of the same magnitude but directed slightly differently right so this is an angle uh, of 60 degrees right so what is uh, the result of addition of these two forces these two vectors well there is a parallelograms rule right you know so this is goes this way this way this way so what's the length of let's put this point a what's the length of r a if you know the angle you know this is d this is d this is also d and d well then obviously the half of this is equal to d times uh sine of 60 sine of um uh, 60 degrees um sine of 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees, or cosine of 30 degrees. So this is this piece, which is half of the force. So um, you have the half of the force is equal to F times um, cosine of 30 or sine of 30, which is square root of 3 divided by 2. But the full force will be twice as big, so it's uh, F times square root of 3, which is uh, minus K q square square root of 3 divided by d square this is the result so these two point objects will pull well 
on this particular drawing down, if you wish. But anyway, they, were, they will be pulling along the bisector of this angle with this force. Next. So this is basically a very simple exercise of the Coulomb's law and the law of addition of mechanical forces. Next. Next you have you have two um, objects, point objects. Each one has um, charge, charge Q. But they originally they are hanging on these threads. But considering they are both charged with the same uh, amount of electricity, both, let's say, positive or both negative, um, then they will repel each other. So the thread will actually be slightly at angle from the vertical. Now, we're obviously considering this on the surface of the Earth or any other planet, so there is a G, which is um, the acceleration of the free fall. Uh, they do have mass let's consider the same mass and the same charge so the question is what is the angle from the vertical they will um, deviate well let's just think about it this way what kind of a force acts on this one well there is a one force is weight which is mg Another force is force of uh, repelling. It goes this way. And the tension of the thread. Now the tension of the thread along the thread can be represented as sum of two forces. One is vertical and another is horizontal. So this is the tension thread. Now, if this is electrical force of repelling, now, since this is uh, the uh, equilibrium state, because they're just hanging in the thin air, right? So this force of repelling should be equal to this force which is the component of the tension. And the same thing with the weight. The weight should be um, e equal and opposite in direction to the force, which is the component, another component, vertical component of the tension, right? So let's say the tension is T. Then, this is um, T times sine phi, right? If this is the angle phi, then this is t times sine of phi. Now this is the horizontal force and it should be equal to the electrical force. Now electrical force is k q square divided by well I didn't really tell you this. This is the given d d square. Now uh, as far as the vertical component this is t times cosine phi and it's supposed to be equal to mg when i'm talking about equal i'm talking about magnitude because the direction is always uh, opposite to each other now we have to find the angle right so the simplest thing is just divide this by this and you will have sine divided by cosine which is tangent of phi is equal to k q square divided by m g d square and from this we get the uh, 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 the angle that's it the problem number three
problem number three is let's imagine uh, an atom of hydrogen so you have a proton plus E and you have electron which is circulating on an orbit which is minus E and let's consider we know its mass so we know the charge charge of the proton is equal to the charge of electron just opposite signs negative for electron positive for proton and let's say we know the mass so my uh, the, and, and one more thing is we know the radius of the atom atom of hydrogen um, now my question is what is the angular um, velocity of the electron as it circulates around the proton and frequency of uh, number of uh, rotations per second let's say okay how can we determine that well obviously we have to use the uh, the Coulomb's law to determine the force which keeps the electron on its orbit right so again this is f e which is equal to um, I'm talking about magnitude, so forget about the sign. K, um, let's say this uh, is Q, which is equal to plus I, and minus E is uh, minus Q, minus Q. So that's the uh, charge of electron, which is equal to the charge of proton. So the atom is neutral. So we have Q square divided by R square, right? So this is the Coulomb's law. And this is the force which keeps electron on its orbit. Now, from the mechanical part, um, uh, from kinematics of uh, rotation, um, we know that the force which is supposed to be um, the, uh, the force which keeps uh, the electron on its orbit, it's supposed to be equal to mass times angular acceleration, which is r omega square. If you don't remember this, I would suggest you to refer to the mechanics part of this uh, course where I'm talking about rotation. Um, that's a very simple thing. So, um, basically that's it. From, from, from here we can determine the angular uh, speed which is, so k q square divided by uh, m r square and r r cube and this is omega square so omega is equal to square root of this now in the notes for this lecture in some cases like in this one I actually do some calculations and uh, uh, the calculation is based on the n numbers which I can get, the real values, what's the mass of electron, what's the charge of electron in coulombs, uh, what's the radius of the atom of uh, uh, hydrogen, etc. And I do calculate the final result, what exactly is the number of, uh, what exactly the angular speed and the number of revolutions per second is omega divided by 2 pi. So if this is the speed, angles, radians per second, if you divide by 2p, it would be number of revolutions per second. That's how many times per second electron is circulating around the uh, uh, nucleus of uh, hydrogen, which is a proton. Um, I just have to make a note here. It's all based on classical Bohr's uh, model of the atom as nucleus and electrons surrounding it. It's not the contemporary view which is based on quantum mechanics etc. So I'm not going into that so consider this as just not the reality how exact uh, uh, how, how exact the frequency of electron uh, in the hydrogen atom is. It's just this particular model with the numbers which are have taken from internet somewhere. All right, so this is the orbital model as it was invented some time ago by Niels Bohr, um, the physicist. Okay.
Now, the third, that's the fourth problem now. <coughs> fourth problem also sounds like a real science, but again, it's just our model. The same as the Bohr's model is a model of the atom, whatever I'm doing right now is another problem. It's also kind of a physical abstract, if you wish. So, what we are doing is, we are trying to um, bombard some atom uh, with some elementary particle, well, for the purpose of, let's say, splitting this atom. Now, for instance, whenever we are bombarding uranium-235 with neutrons of certain intensity, it will split and it will be like an atomic bomb. Or it will be more or less regulated reaction if we are regulating the number of neutrons and that can be a um, power station, nuclear power station. Whatever it is, that's the practical side of it. In my case, I'm just kind of making up a problem which sounds similar, but it's not really similar at all. First of all, I'm not bombarding by neutrons, but by protons, just because I want to have this problem related to Coulomb's law. Why is uh, why in reality uh, in 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 the uh, uh, power station, for instance, um, uh, atoms of uranium are bombarded with neutrons? Well, because neutron is electrically neutral, and there is no resistance from the nucleus whenever the neutron comes into it, it just goes straight through without any kind of force which prevents to do this type of things. In my case, I want the force, so I want this proton to be bombarding the atom which has n protons. <coughs> For instance, in case of uranium, you have 92 protons. Um, so, what's interesting is that as we are bombarding this thing, it not the, 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 according to the physics as we know it right now, according to Coulomb's law, the force between these two is inversely proportional to the square of the distance, which means that it goes to infinity whenever the distance goes to zero. Now, obviously, this is not a point object. Atom has certain size. And uh, to avoid this type of infinity things, what I'm actually asking is, what if I would like this to be covering this distance from A to B? So, I would like to cover the distance from A to B. So I have initial distance to the nucleus, and I have an ending distance to the nucleus. I consider the nucleus to be a point object as well as this proton. And uh, what my interest right now is, I would like to know what's my initial speed I have to shoot this proton to cover this distance against the resistance of the nucleus. And nucleus is resisting because this is a plus and this is the plus. So there is a repelling force. So nucleus is resisting and the force is variable. And since the force is variable, I cannot just, you know, get to the final result uh, of the calculation. What I do need, I, I have to divide this into infinitesimal number of little segments from x to x plus dx. Now we have even integration, right? So you do, you do have to know your mass. So we do have to integrate. Now, if it's on this particular uh, place, the force is equal to, as it depends on the x, the force is equal to um, k times, let's say this is q, this is nq times n times q squared, right? q times nq, and divided by x squared. That's the Coulomb's law. So I have the force. Okay, now, if I'm shooting this particular thing, which has certain mass, mass of the proton, 
and certain initial speed, which I don't know yet. I have to find out what's the initial speed. Now, the work which is this particular force is um, doing um, when the proton is moving from distance A to distance B is equal to integral from A to B force of X times dx, right? Force times distance. So this is the work, and if I integrate it from A to B, I, ha I have the entire work. So, this is exactly the initial kinetic energy of my proton. And this is the equation from which I can get the speed, which I, do, which, which I don't know yet. So, now, this is equal to integral from A to B, uh, K, N, Q square, divided by X square and GX. Now, obviously, this is, goes outside, so I have K, N, Q square. Integral of X square uh, is uh, 1 over X, right? with a minus sign, so we'll have 1 over x, so it's 1 over b minus 1 over a, this is equal to, right? Because the derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. And um, so, that, so that's it basically, now I have an equation. I have from here I get v is, uh, v equals to um, this thing, which is 2k, this 2 goes there, times n times q squared times 1 over b minus 1 over a, and divided by m, and square root of this. And again, I actually substitute certain real values, which I got from, from the net, and uh, I calculate the result of this. So these are four really very, very simple problems. However, what's important is not only you have to know the Coulomb's law, but also some other things. Um, for instance, how to add the forces, um, what's the um, uh, angular uh, acceleration uh, whenever you're talking about the circulating. You have to know some mathematics, like um, uh, simple integrals, like in this particular case. And again, my purpose was not only the Coulomb's law, which is really a very simple thing, but also to bring some other pieces from other parts of the course, which you really have to know by now. And if you don't, please go back and uh, refresh your memory. That's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.